It's the Jurassic Park theme tune. God. Yep. In this episode, me and my dad visit the famous Komodo National Park. It was actually my dad's 60th birthday in April, so I invited him to come to Lombok. He came here, we went all around the island, had a fantastic time, did all the things that you do in Lombok. Uh, I think he really enjoyed it, especially the ghillies. And I was surprised to find out that actually vlogging runs in the family. What a wonderful morning. Yeah. Out in the sun. Uh, some lives and a wonderful start to the day. Dawn has arised, a new day. Beautiful. <laughs> Last time I travelled with my dad was probably, I guess it would have been going to Paris for the Champions League final in 2022. And that went great. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Anyway, yeah, it was lovely to have my dad visit um, because it's his 60th, you know, it's a, it's a big milestone. That is a big deal. I mean, he's getting old, like six. There's no arguing with 60. That's you're old. So I <laughs> wanted to do something cool to celebrate that. I kind of had this idea of well, maybe we can go to the Komodo National Park, you know, um, and I, I knew for a fact that he was interested in that because I went with my friends in 2017 and he was stoked about the footage that I filmed of this Komodo dragon. And that stuck in my mind. So I was like, you know what? Maybe we can go. Uh, so I raised the idea with him before he flew out. And then when I actually started digging into it and looking at the logistics of things, I was like, ah. like it's really expensive. Uh, his birthday happened to fall on Eid which is basically the Islamic version of Christmas. It's like the biggest holiday, the biggest celebration of the year. Everyone is traveling back home to see family. Everyone's off work. It's just, it's not a great time to travel. Um, so I was kind of looking into it. I was like, nah, maybe we'll do something else, you know? So I shelved the idea. And then when I went to pick my dad up from the airport, we, we're driving back. Um, he's getting to see Lombok for the first time and he goes, so when are we going to go see the dinosaurs? You know, uh, he calls the Komodo dragons dinosaurs, which they, they pretty much are. And I was like, ah, well, it's kind of expensive, uh, you know, making the, the old excuses. And I was like, you know, we'll, don't worry, we'll do something else. You know, absolutely do something just as good, which was a total lie. Uh, and I kid you not, like a little kid, like a small kid sat next to me in the car. He just goes, ah, oh, that's so sad. I was really looking forward to seeing the dinosaurs. And I was like, driving like, great. And then I look up in the wing mirror and I see behind me that Layla's just sat there and she's like, Shh. and then I kind of just looked at her and I was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> Off we went to the Komodo National Park for a one day adventure, the trip of a lifetime. And when we got there, the sun was just setting. I remember this. We were driving along the harbour front. And the, the taxi driver was like, oh, hey, you know, do you want a photo? Usually I don't do this, right? Because not being rude, most people don't know how to take a good photo. Like, why would he, why would a taxi driver know that? It's like completely useless information. Like it's never gonna save his life. So I was like, yeah, you know, go for it. And I gave him my phone and he took the photo and it was, you know, it's pretty shit, but that's okay. That's fine, that's what I expected. <laughs> uh, I figured I'd get lots of good photos on the trip itself. I had my film camera with me, obviously. I shoot film. <laughs> so yeah, we got to the hotel, um, headed out, got some food. By the way, what has happened to Labo Ambajo? This place, when I rocked up here with my mates six years earlier, it was like, in my mind at least, I remember it as being like a single dusty roads with a couple of basic buildings. I don't think many tourists come here yet. I don't know, it's, wow. It's really changed a lot. I was walking around like, what the fuck? What the hell, man? 
This place is so different now. It's got an artisan bakery called Komodo. So yeah, we got some good food. Had some ice cream, because I can't say no to ice cream and neither can my dad. Nice? Yeah, very nice. And then yeah, prepped all my camera gear and that was it. It was going to be a very, very early start. I'm speaking very quietly because dad is already asleep. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Doesn't take long for you, does it? Nah. Once I hit that pillar, that's me gone. It's quite a long day of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to uh, tomorrow? Yes, very much. Really am. Yeah. Seeing the prehistoric animals. Should be good. Should be fantastic. So I booked with a company called East Cruise and they were they were really good. They said, you know, communication was dead easy and they said, okay, we're gonna pick you up at 6 a.m. I was like, ah. Oh. But then, I, you know what, I kind of appreciate that because you're only here for one day, like you're doing this one day tour. You wanna start early, you wanna make the most of it, right? So. 6 a.m. out the door, in the car, heading down to the harbour, onto the boat, dead easy. And then the tour guide, you know, introduces himself, does the obligatory safety talk, you know, blah, blah, blah. There are some safety life jackets somewhere, probably not enough for everyone, blah, blah, blah. Some of you may die, you know, usual stuff. Uh, and then we literally flew into the national park. Like this boat was rapid. This is a top travel It's a top travel tip <laughs> i read that when you're booking a day tour like this in the komodo national park try and get yourselves a fast speed boat like this one because it's got a bigger engine it can move way faster than some of the other local boats and i'd read some reviews of other tour companies where because the boat took so long to get between the places they kind of like missed half of their itinerary but not this boat this boat was fast so I, uh, you know, did the old warming up, snapped a few photos. Quite like this one, um, kind of the spray and the islands and then the sky. It's quite a nice composition. And then I got a couple of my dad looking out the window. Yeah. And then the first stop was Padar Island, obviously. If you don't know about Padar Island, then you should just Google it or search it on Instagram and immediately you'll go, oh that place you know this is like it's the spot in the komodo national park um, it's an iconic location where you can get these gorgeous photos of this like dazzling green pristine islands you know nobody in sight apart from the fact that you know it was swarming with tourists so you join this throng of tourists on the stairway to heaven to nirvana you know, this promised land of photography and everyone's so excited. We're all going to get like, these beautiful, unique photos that no one else has. It, it's like a, it's a pilgrimage. Uh, it's, it's the very best of humanity. It's beautiful. In case you couldn't tell by me and my dad's glistening with sweat, it's a really hard hike. I think, I think it's like 800 steps and the, the heat is intense. God, it is hot. That hasn't changed at all. I remember in 2017 when I did it with my boys, I said the exact same thing. I was like, it is hot, hot and sweaty. But we made it. It is so hot. Here he is. <laughs> made it to the top. Well done. And what views? The views were just unbelievable. <laughs> I was fantastic, Ju beautiful, amazing views, either side. <laughs> Told you this uh, this vlogging thing really does run in the family. You're it, taking my job. Unbelievable. You're stealing oh. my job. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you say? Yeah. Thumbs up. Got to oh. do. Thumbs up. Do you feel uh, 60 years old yet? Don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> no tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah.
we had reached the top, you know, this is the pinnacle of photography. One step back where you, where you were before was fine. That's fine. <laughs> Don't worry, you won't be going anywhere. All right, I'm just going to line this up. And then all smiles. Three, two, one. Got a few obligatory shots up here with my dad. Uh, some of these I really, really like. I think they're really nice. I also took a few selfies on my phone just, just in case, you know, that the film photos were complete write-offs. Um, but yeah, the, the landscape photos up here, they weren't that great. Like, I don't know. I was, I was trying to find an angle where there weren't any tourists and that was pretty much impossible, as you, as you can see. Um, they're kind of just, these photos are just the samey same, like we see those on Instagram every day. I was like, trying to find something different. Uh, and it's only on the way down that I finally started to find some nice compositions. I really like this, even with like all the boats and the people, it's an incredibly beautiful spot. And yeah, I, I was really happy with how this one turned out. Um, these two, some sort of weird overlap there. I'm not really sure what happened, but I don't know. I'd crop them into squares and yeah, I both, I quite like both of those. Next, the main event. This is the reason we were all here, you know. My dad was incredibly excited. We were heading to the Komodo Island itself. We're on Komodo Island, which is where you've been wanting to come for a long time. Yeah. You excited about this? Yeah, I'm really am. This is uh, kind of a once in a lifetime thing. You get to yes. get to see the Komodo dragon, hopefully. Yeah. This is the main thing Dad's been looking forward to. Yeah. I look like a tourist, and I've got so many cameras. Yeah, I was I was rolling heavy with the cameras here. Like, <laughs> look at me. Um, Kind of look like Chris Hemsworth in Extraction, except they're they're not guns, and I'm not that hot. So I was just saying I look like Chris Hemsworth from Extraction. Okay. Why are you pulling my face like? I wasn't. Okay. Well, I just wanted to show you this, and what's your thoughts on how I dress this day? Do you think I look cool? Would you be seen with, with me like that? Absolutely not. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> I think I look like Chris Hemsworth from Extraction. You know how he has all the guns like geared up? Layla? Welcome to Komodo National Park. Cool. So we get on the island and our guide gives us a bit of a, a bit of a rundown on the facts. How fast are they? 25 kilometers per hour. I'm sorry, what? Did he just say 25 kilometers an hour? I remember when I was here with my mates in 2017, we found this massive Komodo dragon. Like they called him Hercules. He was huge. He was so slow. Like there was no 25 kilometers an hour. So I went on YouTube to uh, to find out how fast the Komodo dragon runs, okay? And I found this absolutely insane Japanese game show uh, where someone is trying to outrun a Komodo dragon. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack here, but uh, I think I guess the main takeaway is that they're fast. They are fucking fast. But <laughs> what? Oh my god! And then I found this other insane video of like it's just a, a compilation of different Komodo dragons devouring different things. It's like this really strange YouTube niche of Komodo dragons just killing and eating and... Watching these reptiles on the hunt is difficult because they usually rip their prey apart while it's still alive. The narrator's voice on this is like disturbingly calm as well. He's just like really cheerful. 
But if you like gore and lots of blood, you're at the right place. So let's get started. If you like gore and lots of blood, you're in the right place. This is insane. 14. Komodo swallows monkey. Here is a monkey that ends up in a Komodo's mouth and is swallowed alive. The Komodo dragon ambushed and swallowed one of the monkeys that fell while struggling for territory. It's unfortunate for the monkey, but I guess that's how the wheels of life turn. Monkeys. <laughs> that's how the wheels of life turn. You know, sometimes you fall out of a tree and get absolutely destroyed by a Komodo dragon. That's just how, that's how life is sometimes, guys. Sucks. Really sucks. Can you imagine, like, some kid falling into this YouTube niche, like, maybe he's just watched How to Train a Dragon, and he's like, yeah, you know, typing, he's really interested about Komodo dragons. And then he's just watching this. It goes down like a charm. Well, almost. What a chubby goat. Now, this... <laughs> goes down like a charm. What a chubby goat. This is... What is going on? You can imagine his mom coming into the room like, Michael, no! <laughs> anyway, the takeaway, I guess the takeaway is that, yeah, these things are absolutely lethal. Um, just actual dinosaurs that, you know, their sole purpose on Earth is to kill things. So obviously, you know, it makes sense to have like 30 tourists just bumbling around the forest trying to find one. Kind of like a herd of goats, really. Just, you know, tasty goats walking around. Yeah, this actually didn't go too well at first, to be honest. Like, we were all kind of spent about half an hour walking around, didn't find anything. You know, everyone's starting to just get a bit like, what's going on, you know? Are we gonna see one? And we ended up just standing around, waiting. Everyone's just like, so... <laughs> we found some Komodo poo. You managed to see some Komodo poo. Yeah. That's not bad. It's not bad, it's a start. <laughs> you know, that counts for something. Um, but I was I was starting to get worried. I was like, fuck. You know, like my dad's it's my dad's 60th and he's come all this way specifically to see the Komodo dragon. And we weren't seeing any Komodo dragons. I was very worried. So far. We've seen some Komodo poo. It's going really well. So the whole point of coming here for my dad's birthday was to see the Komodo dragons. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna see them. Fuck. And then suddenly we hear this like thud. You, you know in uh, Jurassic Park, like the classic scene with the, the shaking water. We just hear this boom, boom. Boom, shaking. And then out of the jungle, fucking dragon. <laughs> and we're all like, holy shit. And then like everyone just get the phones out and start chasing after it, like getting filming. Like, I found it so funny, especially in hindsight, having, having just watched uh, these YouTube videos. Like I find it so funny, this lethal killing machine just going about its day. And then we're all behind it, like, you know, <laughs> very amusing. It could just turn around at any point, any moment, could just turn around and destroy someone. It's fucking crazy. In all the excitement, I didn't actually get any photos of the film camera, which was kind of the whole idea of this video. So, I don't know, my, my dad was buzzing and I was relieved. So it kind of didn't matter. I was like, smashed it, like the whole day is, a success. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. Thank God. I, re I think even the uh, the guys were a bit like, yeah. they started to get worried. <laughs> Brought all these people to the island who paid a lot of money and there were no dragons. Relief all round. And it got even better. As we were heading back to the boat, one of the guys was like, yo, there's another dragon up ahead. And everyone's like, oh sick, like there's another lethal killing machine just over there. And then naturally we'll just sprint towards them. Uh, there are actually two. So I finally got some film photos. I was stoked. Um, I didn't really like this one. I, kind of, I was kind of like fired up on adrenaline. So I didn't really think about composition 
and everything here. I don't know. Not sure if I actually like these photos. Um, this one is okay, but I felt like the dragon got lost in the frame. So I got a little bit creative and uh, just did this crop. And I like that a lot more. I think that's pretty nice. It's pretty cool. And then there was this huge Chungus over here. Um, he was very chilled out, you know, like suspiciously not asked. You know, maybe he just swallowed a whole goat or something. I don't know. But I got a moment with him. Um, this one, the focus is kind of all fucked up. Uh, it's a bit annoying. Uh, I just didn't nail the focus on that. This one, much better. I like that. I like the little leaves in the foreground, gives it some depth. Yeah, not bad. And then one of the guides next to me, uh, this dude, he said, hey, you know, you want a photo with you and your dad? And, um, you know, bear in mind the whole story of the taxi driver the day before. In my head, I was like, yeah, you know, like it's obviously not going to be a good photo. That's okay. Not judging. So, you know, I, I gave him the phone, not really expecting anything good at all. He, he's got my phone here and we're like behind the Komodo dragon. He's like taking the photos. I was like, okay, just taking a fair few there. Hands the phone back to me. And I was like, all right, let's, you know, let's see how this is going to be. Whoa. Boom. You know, look at this. This photo is amazing. This is the best photo of the whole trip. Like he absolutely killed it. The, the angle, the framing, composition. My man, you got to quit tourism. Like clearly a photographer. This is unreal. And it was on my phone. So clearly film is dead. <sighs> That's a great photo. That's one for the, the memory books, that one. Really love it. Uh, so it just goes to show some people, some strangers are worth handing a phone to. Does that, is that good advice? Probably not. No. How many Komodos did we see in the end? One, two, three, four. Four. That's yep. what we saw. Happy with that? Very much so. Once Great. In a, once in a lifetime. One, once in a lifetime. Nice. Brilliant. What did you say earlier? You're happy with the rest of the day? Doesn't yes, matter what. I am. I don't care less. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad, he could have gone home right there and then. You know, he was happy as I've ever seen him. You know, feet up, job done. Um, so the rest of the day was was all about, you know, it's much more chilled out. Um, it was much more water-based. So we headed out to the famous place called Manta Point. And believe it or not, this is where you can find some manta rays. And my GoPro at this point fucked up. You know, like classic GoPro, literally the moment I need it. The one time in the day that I need my GoPro and it froze on me. It's like, great. Um, so I didn't get much video of this, but fortunately a dude who was on the tour he was called um, Nick, and shout out to Nick for letting me use his footage. He got some great footage. So we got in the water, and basically the manta rays were right there. Like we got in the water, we looked down, they're right below us. So I was like, holy shit, they're massive. Um, but the problem was that the current was really, really strong. So we were trying to stay, say these are the manta rays, we were trying to stay above them, but the current just kept pulling us away. Um, so what they did, which I thought was really clever, and this is something I made earlier to help explain. So say this is the boat. Obviously it's a boat, look how good that is. Um, they cast out this long line of rope and we basically all grabbed onto the rope and then the manta ray were still in position down there and then the boat just slowly moved against the current and just held us in position above the manta ray. And honestly, it was so cool. I've never seen manta ray this big before. And I had my other underwater camera with me. This one right here. It's kind of ridiculous, like how much, how many cameras do I need, you know? But I was snapping away on this. And honestly, I don't know how I managed to do this, but some of the photos I got these manta ray, I'm stoked with. Like this one here, I want to print and get on my wall. I'm so happy with it. Like, I don't know how I managed to do it, but you know, the way the light is and the kind of, it's a little bit blurred, which, which gives this feeling of speed and the kind of wings as if it's flying. It's such a cool image. And I know I shouldn't hype myself up and blow my own trumpet, but that's a great image. I'm really happy with that. That was a very cool experience. We then dropped in for some snorkeling on this reef and I just carried on taking photos. I came away with so 
so many beautiful images that I, I really love. Uh, I was just drifting on this current, like really chilled current, just snapping away as I drifted past. And the reef was stunning. It was so beautiful, so healthy. All of these fish, like the way the light rays are bursting through, um, it was gorgeous. Honestly, I was so happy. It kind of makes me want to do more underwater photography looking at these again. like I've been dropped in on this scene from Blue Planet you know I'm just I'm just waiting to start hearing David Attenborough narrating <laughs> you can just imagine him like and here we have the peculiar clownfish in its natural habitat and oh what what the fuck is that <laughs> I'm absolutely loving it how's that dad the last stop of the day was on this beautiful little island called Kanawa Island and there was this really nice kind of water on the pier and loads of fish so I tried to get a photo of that, um, it didn't really work out. I do like this one a lot, I think I kind of get like a holiday magazine from cover vibes from this. I like this one. And then there were these kind of like old dilapidated buildings that I like the look of. So it took a little bit of a little bit of a moment there just to snap away. All in all, it was a it was a great day. Like it couldn't have worked out any better actually. Uh, I think my dad was really, really happy. He enjoyed his 60th birthday present. So yeah, good job to my sisters. Thanks for helping. Um, like he said, it's it's a once in a lifetime kind of thing and it, it makes for a great memory. Uh, I think it's really nice to travel with your parents if you get the opportunity to do so. Hope you've enjoyed watching this. Um, I am having a blast making them. I really enjoy this format and, and thank you for all the feedback from the last one. There's a couple more on the way, so stay tuned. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Unless you fall out of a tree and get devoured by a Komodo dragon, because you know, that sometimes that does happen. That is the wheel of life. So be careful out there. All right, I'll see you soon. You're gonna have to watch the name that out because <laughs> that sound will <laughs> edit the fart out. <laughs> yes. I might keep it in. <laughs> Komodo swallows goats. Great. I'm not sure if this goat felt anything when the dragon first attacked it, but boy, did he do a job on the poor animal. I mean, the animal is crushed and dismembered as the large and deadly reptile swallows it whole.